Hey guys, it's Brian and welcome back to my shop. So hey, it has been a number of months since I've actually done a video and done an update on my project split decision. And the reason for that is, well, I had to take some side jobs, pay some bills around this joint, as well as had to teach myself how to do modeling. Uh, I still didn't really learn how to do a modeling all that great, and you'll see that uh, coming up here. So actually, we'll go ahead, go right over to the computer, see where we're at with the car, and uh, kind of go from there. All right, guys. So here we have uh, the application I choose to use when I'm actually doing my design and my organic shapes. Um, this is Rhino, Rhino 6, and I just find it's a lot simpler to deal with um, with regards to organic shapes. So I've gone ahead and opened up my model. Um, and I've got obviously a number of layers that I've already created. I'm not going to go through the whole design process. It'd be very, very lengthy. I've actually, you know, redrawn and redrawn these lines a number of times. I just kind of want to give you a flavor of, you know, how I go about doing this uh, in case you want to try to tackle it yourself. So the first thing is I'm going to turn on my, turn on the uh, frame itself. So here's the frame. And obviously the frame is well-known dimensions. Those were created a long time ago. And if you follow the video series, you'll know exactly how I went about creating this frame. After that, uh, I got, I'm gonna add in my scans, the 3D scans I've done. So here is a scan of basically the tires and the frame. Obviously the seats were in the car at that time, but you can kind of see how I'm lining up and basically, I have to drag those scans over the frame structure itself and highlight this and, and drag it and basically align it up to where it needs to live. And that's going to give us basically our tire position as well as the tire height. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and bring in. So I scanned in the Honda, Honda twice. One time I scanned it in with a complete door frame and the windshield. And I only scanned in one side of the car, and that's the problem because this will, since it's only one side, I'm not able to actually uh, perfectly line it up. What I actually need to do is scan in both sides of the car, and when I scan in both sides of the car, that allows, um, well, actually, wait, let's go back to this guy for a second. So this model here allows us, uh, actually misspoke, this allows me to place the windshield correctly. So if you look right here, We've got this hole right there. That hole actually appears in the exact same location in the frame on the other side of the car. So what I was able to do there is I actually uh, scanned it in and I added in this, this uh, basically reference line here and a reference line there to get that to the, uh, to get that to basically, so I have a nice solid point. Now, once I have a solid point, I'm able to draw a line between those two points, that guy right there, eventually highlighted, and then find the midpoint. Finding the midpoint allowed me to line up the cabin so it's right in the middle of the car, and then obviously account for any kind of pitch and roll as well as able to basically establish uh, you know, this particular scan in a perfect, uh, perfect space lining up over top of the frame. Then what I did was took the other scan here, and this scan is is incorporating uh, again. I got some tire scan here. This is when uh, I had the uh, kind of the uh, the plaster of Paris kind of lined up with the door as well as the windshield. And if I kind of overlay all of these together and kind of line them all up, now I know in perfect space and design space where that windshield is, where the doors are. Where the hard points are, these little these little areas right here, um, you know, obviously the frame, that kind of stuff. So what I need to do before I start designing, now that I kind of have these hard points kind of laid out, is I need to actually go ahead and establish a couple of other lines, and specifically I need to establish the tires and the tire space. So basically drawing across the tires there, I established. The ride, the tires, as well as the minimum and maximum ride height. So the car sits four inches off the ground, or the frame rather sits four inches off the ground. So I needed to make sure, make sure that when I'm designing the front fender, specifically the front fender, because the back is usually going to be higher anyway, that that accounted for that four inch gap. So this this point right here represents the four inches off the top of the tire. So now I know that when I'm drawing my fender. 
it actually has to be no no lower than this location right here and that location right there. So, and I went ahead and added some additional tires. Obviously, these are not the ones I chose. Uh, these are just actually some that I stole. Um, and I do that because this mesh is kind of hard to deal with. So even though it's a scan, it's a perfect representation of the car. Um, it's, it's, if you zoom in on it, it's really not a good surface, a surface to model anyway. Uh, the scan is very, very accurate, and it's, but it does get a number of artifacts as well because it's, uh, you know, because we're scanning and get dirt particles and everything really when you pick it up. So that's really not a, a great surface to model off of. So what I needed to do, um, like I said, I was going to go ahead and start adding some elements. I'm going to turn off some of these scans here. Oops. Let's see. I think I can see them a little bit better. Add my car tires. So here's my four tires. Let's go ahead and bring the frame back in. So as we look at this right here, this is an actual representation of how the car sits. The tires are in the correct position. The frame is in the correct position. And what we really need to do is bring in the windshield. And how I did that is if I look at my scan again, go back to my scans here. And I use a, a plugin into Rhino, which is called Mesh to Surface. And using this plugin, I can come in here, I can bring this mesh surface in. Okay, so we've got it loaded up into Mesh to Surface. And what I need to do is create this windshield. Uh, obviously, I need to create some other parts too, or I did create some other parts, but I just kind of want to give you an idea how I went about uh, utilizing this tool to make sure that all the parts from the scans were actually accurate. So when I go to create the, the actual body plug, when I you know mill it out, that I know that I'm not going to have like problems or at least major problems anyway. So to do that, I just basically need to first of all create the windshield. Um, again, just kind of do this here, and we'll put a line. We'll create here, create there. For this uh, example, I'm really not going to be super super accurate. But what this tool does by default is it automatically places these points that I'm adding to the actual surface itself, to the scanned mesh. So I've basically got the outline right now. And what I want to do is go ahead and create that surface and kind of see what the tolerances are um, as it relates to what I just created versus real life. So I'll do that, highlight those, create a surface. And you see, we got some, some problems here, which is to be expected. So we'll, we'll turn on tolerance. And you can see there's some really big gaps. Um, the green area obviously means um, that I'm actually on the surface or the scan, and uh, the black areas mean I'm, I'm way out of tolerance. Um, obviously, that's to be expected because there's no data points there. So if I go ahead and add some additional data points, just by simply adding these lines, it's going to start creating that surface or start prepping it to be a much more accurate surface. And just, oops, that's not a good one. So I'll come fix that, go back and undo, add another line over here, and add another line over there. So obviously in a matter of seconds, I pretty much basically created this surface and I can import this into Rhino and um, I'd have the windshield. This obviously isn't very accurate just yet because it, it's accurate in the sense that all of those points are accurate, but I actually don't have it to the edge of the windshield at all. Um, when I did this for real, instead of just doing this quick example, obviously I went in and, and made those adjustments. Those adjustments do take a lot longer, but uh, once you get the outline, it's literally just kind of drag it and drop it and you basically can now have that surface. So that gives you the idea of what I did here to you know create the surfaces um, that I did that for the windshield as, as well as the door panels, all of the surfaces that I needed to utilize uh, before I started doing any modeling. So anyway, we'll go ahead and back to the design portion. And there's the windshield I did. I did a lot better job obviously and it's very clean. That's a nice surface there, and we'll go ahead and I did the same thing for the side glass as well as the door skins themselves and, and the uh, and the hard points. So 
there is the door skin from the Honda, the, ski, the, 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 the actual rail. You'll notice this is without the surfaces on it. That was after I cut it and removed those. So um, we do have this kind of like area here that we have to build up. Um, and that's from, you know, from actually pulling off those skins off of the original car. So uh, let's go ahead and add in a couple of more elements. Um, this diffuser. I'm not going to lie, I didn't create it, I stole it, uh, so I went ahead and stole also a front uh, a front area, let's see, okay, so this is also an object that I, I saw online that I kind of picked, these are not, uh, these are meshes again, these aren't actual surface or rhino surfaces, but what I need to do, and I only need to create one side of the car as well, I don't need to create both sides of the car, so, um, what I need to do next is really just start kind of laying out uh, my wireframe. Um, and that wireframe needs to take into account all these hard points. So here's some of my wireframe drawings here. Um, again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I did everything from scratch. What I did was I went in and I picked a couple cars I liked. And then you can see here, I'll bring them in on. And I basically drew some surface lines, not 100% to what they were, but basically surface lines that were kind of representative of some supercars. and kind of used them as kind of a modeling guide. So um, my car is truly um, different than all these cars um, that I've kind of just kind of based some generic models off of. And we'll go ahead and get rid of the uh, wireframe and see where we kind of ended up. So this is kind of what I developed. Turn it into a little bit more of a rendering. And you can see, I think uh, the front's coming along really nicely. Um, the side, I kind of like the aggressiveness of the side and the back still needs a lot of work. Um, but unfortunately this took a long time to, I'm flying through this video really quickly, but to develop these really nice surfaces that kind of flow, um, took, took quite a bit of effort. I'm not a surfacer. I'm not a modeler by default. So I had to kind of teach myself uh, how to do this. Um, and ultimately, I'm kind of to the point where I basically am stuck. So I reached out to a couple of people on Instagram and asked them if they could, uh, you know, help me out. And I ended up finding somebody that uh, was actually going to help out with the project. And they took what I did and added some additional surfacing and, and cleanup. And this is what he's come up with so far. This is not done. This isn't completed yet, but you get the idea of where we're at, where we're going. It, the car is basically, you know, it is profile wise. It's basically where I want it to be. Um, you can see a side profile there and that looks pretty good. Uh, some of these lines again are going to get changed and get more refined. The front profile. Now I've already kind of changed the front profile up a little bit. Uh, with uh, an addition, uh, the opening has changed uh, as well as the actual inlet down here has kind of changed, making it more aggressive. Again, we're just still still kind of trying to make some more aggressive lines on the car. The uh, overhead look here, the belt line, which is this kind of line right here, that looks really pretty good. And so yeah, so that's kind of it. That's where we're at with the uh, car where it stands right now. Um, what I've decided to do is actually go in and make a two-thirds scale model of the car. What that's going to allow me to do is, is make any uh, slight modifications before I start making the, the large production molds. So to basically, they'll take this and make it into, uh, like I said, two-thirds scale model. Just so happens that a Chinese go-kart is roughly about the size of a two-thirds scale model. So once we get back to the shop, I'll go ahead and show you what we're kind of doing there. and. Um, but uh, yeah, so this was a quick overview of kind of how I went about uh, or how I'm going about change, creating the body. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to somebody who's a little bit more in tune with actually how to create a, a um, how to create an actual car body and just using my reference lines and, and all the reference points that I've created previously. So um, anyway, hopefully you like where it's going. It's getting more aggressive in the front. I can tell you that already. 
the sides are, are going to be start tuned in and the back is is still a ways off yet but we're making really good progress especially now that i got somebody who who truly knows what they're doing so hey you're still here wow thanks for watching really appreciate it so anyway um as i alluded to this is going to be a mini sd our two-thirds scale model so it's a chinese go-kart or what's left of a chinese go-kart really these, these red bars are the only thing that are kind of uh residing from that chinese go-kart and i've got this uh salvaged we get that uh, for $50 it's a ninja motor it actually does run even though it was only 50 bucks so kind of excited about that so gonna go ahead and build this uh build this to actually be usable even though it's a it's realistically only a two-thirds scale model the other thing we're really going to try to do is make this a hybrid so in you know keeping with the theme of gas and electric cars this will be the marriage of both of those things so uh, if you're into that kind of thing and you haven't already please consider subscribing and as always thanks for watching